The Victrix Gambit. It's the fastest Xbox controller in the world. In this video, we're gonna unbox and comprehensively review this beautiful wired Xbox Series S and X controller. If you thought that was the end of the video, you'd be dead wrong. We're gonna browse the website and debunk a lot of the marketing hype behind this bad boy and ruin a couple of fanboys' lives. Then hop on my back and ride me like a pony to the living room where I'm gonna remap the back paddles and show you the software suite. Then I'm gonna give you my stamp of approval as an elite gaming specimen and controller reviewing specialist. If this $100 wired bad boy is worth the pickup, let's get it. So the Victrix Gambit wired controller for Xbox Series and Xbox One was requested by several members of the YouTube channel, and as soon as it was requested, I did order this bad boy. However, it took a while for me to get around to this review because I got violently ill here recently. It wasn't COVID, but really did set me behind in some of my content here. Now, of course, with this packaging, you are going to have a ton of purple, as that is the theme color of this company, Victrix. And of course, you are going to have lime green, as this is a licensed Xbox product. There isn't any laser cut foam or anything, just this little plastic cutout in here. Hey, activate Dolby Atmos when you're using a headset plugged into the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the bottom of this controller. You do also have your instruction pamphlet over here. I'm not a huge fan of this pamphlet. I don't really like brochures that open up like this. I actually prefer just the traditional booklet. Also, there is no color in here and it is rather informative and shows you the features and functions of this controller. Now, the carrying case is actually very nice. You have the little Victrix logo on here. You also have an aluminum or metal pull tab here and a little bit of purple along the zipper line. Overall, a very handsome controller right out of the gate. You do have a 10 foot braided USB USB-C cable. It is, of course, purple. And the quality of the cable is very important in a wired controller because, well, it's mandatory. You're going to be using it. So again, if you're playing on PC, you're probably sitting at a desk about three feet in front of your tower where you can just plug into the front of it. However, if you are playing on console, 10 foot might not be enough for you depending on your living room or bedroom setup. So I will have an extension linked in the description below. It is a 10 foot extension, female on one end, male on the other. So basically you're getting a 20 foot cable with that. No breakaway or anything like that, but pretty flexible. I would like if it was a little bit lighter and more flexible, but definitely a high quality cable, that's for sure. Now the included accessories here, you do have the paddles, which do feel incredibly cheap and flimsy. However, that is only because they're not attached currently. You do also have two additional thumbsticks. You have a short domed and a long concaved. And that long concaved is very long. These thumbsticks do not work with control freaks or any other kind of third party generic caps, unless you get the slip over ones that are basically little condoms that slip on the tip. Uh, and I'm not a huge fan of those, not condoms. Well, yeah. <laughs> but the little generic slip-on caps, which I have reviewed on this channel in the past. You have a couple of anti-friction rings here, and you do have a wheel D-pad. These are really good for fighting games if you like to bust off combos and whatnot. Overall, very nice case. Like I said, you do have this little rubberized cutout down here to hold all your accessories. Yeah, that's 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 a purple controller if I've ever seen one before. Barney would be proud. Way different than any other controller I've ever tested on this channel. Game pads or controllers, if you will. This is nice. Okay, so I see what's going on here. Me likey very much. So this has a four paddle design. Well, technically button. Wait for old uh, Danny DeVito to drive by in his Buick. I wish I lived in the rural hills or something, but I'm in the inner city. So this has a four rear button design installed right out of the box. However, you can swap. That's where I wanted that anyway. Uh, you can actually install the two paddle here if you prefer to have two rear buttons, which I think is a really cool design. Granted, a lot of premium and custom controllers out there, you can simply remove or pop off sticks that you don't need or remove all of them if you don't use them. So a couple of really unique features on the Victrix Gambit that I've never seen on a controller before is first of all, this has five-way trigger stops. So by holding down the trigger stop button down here, you pull down the trigger and you'll feel these little distinct steps in there. And then as soon as you find the desired trigger pull, you let go of this button. And now that is your trigger pull. So say I want it shorter than that, bam. So that's really interesting. The other one, this is very niche, is you can have either circular, traditional analog stick gates where you can have full circular rotation or you have hexagonal gates, which would be good for, in my opinion, only fighting games because maybe you just wanna be in a specific direction, moving diagonally. Um, but generally for first person shooters, racing games, etc., you're going to want to have full control of that left analog stick. 85, maybe 90% of your trigger pull. So very effective trigger stops, which is great. It's a big pet peeve of mine is these custom controllers that have trigger stops that only cut out about 30% of the trigger pull. Like why even bother at that point? Marketing, putting that little feature on the box. Um, these are awesome. Now turning them off is kind of a pain in the wiener schnitzel. There we go. So this faceplate is fully rubberized here. And then your pause options and share buttons are these kind of 
grippy buttons here. But the weirdest thing, in my opinion, is the thumbsticks. These rings are rubberized, so you actually are dragging against rubber, which is kind of interesting. So the rear buttons are ergonomically correct. You're not going to accidentally actuate them or anything like that because how you naturally want to hold the controller like this, they're up and out of the way as they are literally sunken in flush with the rear shell, which is fantastic. They don't have a very satisfying tactile click. They're not mechanical. Their membrane switches for sure, you can tell but they do feel good. Face buttons feel identical to a standard Xbox One or Series controller as they do have a rubber plunger underneath there. It is a membrane design. You do have full onboard control of that 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. You can both increase and decrease the volume, but you can also adjust the chat and game blend, which is very nice. And the faceplate is magnetized. Wow, that is an interesting looking controller. So magnetized and this one is rubberized as where this one is hard plastic. I think I might actually prefer this because it's a little bit more in line with what I'm used to. Yeah, for sure, for sure, absolutely. So now the thumbsticks do feel a lot better because these are not rubberized, these are hard plastic, as opposed to dragging against rubber here. I'm not sure how many people are gonna use this little floppy boy here. A little flaccid, I don't really think this is gonna do anything for anybody. I also do think it looks better like this with the white and black kind of stormtrooper design with the purple thumbsticks. I think that looks pretty cool. The bumpers feel good. The Oh my golly, I do like the bumpers a lot, jeepers. They're tactile and clicky, and they're also ergonomically cut out just right. And then you do have a little bit of texturing on here, but they're pretty slick still. It's not rubberized or anything. You just have these little uh, ribbed for his pleasure design cut into the plastic. Let's try that two paddle on there. Quick swap. Yeah, oh, that feels good too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I see what all the fuss is about. What all the hubbub's about down there in the old comment section, the old Petri dish of bacteria down there. Be nice. So I don't know how to read, but I just tried my luck with this instruction manual and I'm actually proud of myself. I was able to sound out all the words and everything as long as they're under two syllables. Just want to make sure I wasn't missing any key features or anything with this bad boy. So I'm going to put those aftermarket thumbsticks on there because the default ones here, these are just standard short concave sticks, much like what you're going to get on a standard controller, which I'm not a huge fan of, which obviously I would put some kind of control freaks on, but that's not an option here. Now we'll say the rubber or silicone compound that they use on these is actually incredibly grippy and feels very nice. And you do have a little texturing in the middle there. Put this long boy on the right. And I am actually a big fan of dome sticks. I have been all the way back to the PlayStation 2 era. So as long as they are grippy enough, that's the big caveat there. As long as they are grippy enough to actually be precise in your aiming, which in this case, it's only on the left stick anyway, so it really doesn't matter. So yeah, that short dome stick feels really good and that high right stick feels fantastic. So I'm a big fan of the included thumbsticks. It would be nice if they included six thumbsticks as that is kind of the golden standard with premium controllers is to have six included sticks just to give you options because some people prefer domed or convex. Some people prefer concave. Some people prefer tall, short. Let's get this bad boy plugged up to the Series X, shall we boys? Remap of the back buttons on the Victrix Gambit is incredibly simple. I have half a brain cell and I was able to figure it out while you're holding down this remapping button, you are gonna press one of the rear buttons. You will get a purple, of course it's purple. You will get a purple LED flashing. Then you were gonna press whatever face button, D-pad, etc. you would like mapped. And bada bing, bada boom, you got the battles mapped. So whether you're on Xbox or PC, you can go to the Microsoft store and install this application. It is called Victrix Control Hub, and it is quite in depth. Of course, it is purple themed, and you do have a couple of options here. On the main menu, you will get this dashboard showing you all of your settings and features. You can go to configure over here, and you can remap your buttons, back paddles, set dead zones for your analog sticks, fine tune your trigger pull, set up three audio profiles with their own equalizer settings and adjust the strength of your vibration. You will also be prompted to do a firmware update as soon as you plug in your controller. And if you're having any issues with any buttons, thumbsticks, triggers, come over here to diagnostics and you can run a quick check to make sure everything is in tip top shape. Just a gorgeous looking controller overall. Let's play some games, shall we? So this is of course Call of Duty Vanguard, which I said multiple times on my Facebook gaming page as well as my YouTube channel, I was not gonna buy because well, it was going to be the worst Call of Duty title in several years. It's not as bad as I thought, and uh, I did get this game bundled with my Xbox Series X. Oh, that Victrix Gambit is feeling tight right now. No stick drift out of the box with these thumbstick modules. I do have the Dead Zones bumped down to its lowest possible value, and they are not drifting at all. And in case you're wondering what my in-game sensitivity is, it's a 7-7, which is what I play in virtually every Call of Duty game. Nice took us, dude. You've been squatting? Probably help if I lowered the mic down closer to my suck hole. That's a hell of a throw. <laughs> we got an arm on me. Call me Barry Bonds. You're blocking my shot, big dog. Ah. Them boys do be throwing grenades, I'll tell you that right now. Shouldn't have been on that turret, I guess, they're big dog. 
Oh, oh, friendly fire. My bad. Good thing this isn't escape from Tarkov, right? Yep, yeah, I'm unbeatable thanks to this Victrix Gambit. It's turned me into a true esports athlete. So there's no denying that the Victrix Gambit is a very good wired controller. However, there is a ton of marketing hype and buzzwords thrown around this controller that I'm hearing all over the internet, forums, and right on the box. Now I wanna go ahead and do my part as a tech reviewer with a ton of experience reviewing premium and custom controllers. I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and control alt delete and shut down some of these marketing buzzwords. So they tout this as being the fastest controller in the world. A dual core. The first core, Kryptonite, pulled as an anal bead directly out of Superman's chocolate starfish. The second core is found in the Himalayan mountains being meditated around by shamans. No, every single wired controller on the market touts being fast or the fastest or faster than its competitors. I hate to be the one to tell you that Santa Claus isn't real and the Easter Bunny fucked your mom last Christmas, but generally when controller companies take the wired route it is for two reasons. One, to cut down costs. Or two, because they could not get the official licensing from Sony, Microsoft, or Nintendo to have the wireless connectivity with that console. Every single wireless controller on the market has the option of being played wired with the little port on top then you plug it into the front of your console or your PC. Not to mention wireless technology has had such leaps and bounds over the last seven to eight years that whether you're using a dedicated 2.4 gigahertz connection or you're using Bluetooth 5.0, pretty damn quick. Now, if you're an esports athlete with G Fuel dripping off the mustache, then yes, you might notice the 0.2 milliseconds of delay. However, fastest controller ever, I didn't notice a single bit of difference. Did I strap this thing to a test bench to test each frame on screen? No, but as a Jedi with the gaming reflexes of a Greek god, I didn't notice a damn bit of difference compared to any other wired controller or damn near any wireless controller for that matter. Now that I've lost half my subscriber base, <laughs> the wired boys, as I like to call them, the silencer faceplate, as they call it. It's a rubberized silicone faceplate that hardly anybody's going to use because it feels weird when you're dragging your analog sticks across rubber. It feels slow when you're at full lock. Yes, it's gonna keep you silent in competition so the guy next to you at his terminal can't hear you clickety clacking. He doesn't hear what buttons you're hitting. I, th these marketing gimmicks are insane. Um, the next one, the hexagonal gates for the analog sticks is kind of cool for fighting games, but I think it's incredibly niche and I think very few people are actually going to use them. The five-way trigger stops, kind of a pain in the urethra tip to actually set. Sometimes they just come undone or sometimes they don't set to the exact click of the five settings that you want, but it is cool that it is there and it does work. So that is cool. The paddles do feel ergonomically good. However, I will say the actual mechanism, the module feels a little bit cheap and chintzy because it is just a plastic piece that snaps in and it feels rather rough and scratchy and like cheap plastic, but it is a good paddle design. It is ergonomic and you can cover all four of them comfortably simultaneously. Not a very tactile click though. Interesting. How much does this thing cost and where can you buy it? Well, first of all, Amazon, because you can buy Apple cores and use condoms off Amazon. You can find anything on here. You can find candies that were discontinued eight years ago due to health code violations. So of course you can buy it here and it is only $100. And for $100, this controller absolutely has my recommendation as the best wired controller on the market. They have a website as well. Let's zoom in on my suck hole a little bit. There it is. You can buy it on their website. World's fastest licensed Xbox controller. And there's a little one right here. Let's go down to where the one is explained. Here we go. Some science, boys. Based on independent lab testing, so we're talking about a real laboratory here. We're talking about guys walking around with full coats and beakers testing this bad boy. By NTS, or no took us slapped, in August of 2021, so this is recent, sort of, of average digital and analog input latency with wired connection and audio running on the Xbox Series X consoles. Okay, well, uh, well, <laughs> well, polish my nuts and serve me a milkshake. It seems I'm, I'm wrong. There's some serious science behind this bad boy. Thank you for the sub. It is the fastest controller ever created. Which is good because a lot of gamers in the back of their mind think that there's some kind of esports athlete that can really notice 0.01 milliseconds of input delay. And it does have Dolby Atmos. So the fact that it is the quickest controller on the market, it does have five way trigger stops and it does have Dolby surround sound, which will give you better situational awareness, things like footsteps and whatnot. This is a fantastic controller for competitive use. Is it good for casual use? Yes, it's good for all uses especially because it's only a hundred bucks. Only is subjective. A hundred dollars is not a small amount of money, but in a world of 150 to $400 controllers, a hundred dollars for this level of performance is quite unrivaled. So up until this point, my recommendation for a wired controller has been the Razer Wolverine Ultimate or Tournament. That has changed here today. I would have to say, 
that the Victrix Gambit is an amazing controller. Is the marketing a little bit out of control? Yes, I think I, I might have put my lasso around it and tried to reel it back in a little bit, but people are still going to go buck wild on the internet. Well, Kevin said that input delay isn't that big of a deal and that I'm not the gaming specimen that I thought I am and I can't really tell a difference. Ugh, fuck me. At the end of the day, this is a molded plastic shell with silicone or rubber thumbsticks, a PCB or printed circuit board on the inside, and a cable that you shove into the suck hole of your console or PC. If you can transform 100 US dollars, preferably in singles, into this controller, that's a good day. This is a good controller. All satire aside, this is a damn uh, titty slapping good controller. If you enjoyed this honest controller review, shoving your thumb not anywhere weird because that doesn't do anything for me. Trust me, I've tried it. On the like button, we'll help the video to get seen by more gamers, more controller players, more wired controller players, more Victrix gambits out there, more purple pirates. So this information will reach in a system as well and help them make a decision if this controller is right for their needs. I mean, it's the fastest controller in the world. It's got to be right for everybody, right? Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, as well as tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, stroking my mic, not sure why. I also do honest gaming peripheral reviews, keyboards, mice, controllers, headsets, mics, chairs, etc. I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.